Lou, are you going to kick us off? For me, this came down to uh, number 30 and 32. I just love the uh, the evolution of the peat in number 30. Started out as bacon, went to a, a roaring bonfire, and then just kind of drifted off into, into ashes, which is actually one of my favorite peat characteristics. Um, I love a, a nice ashy character. Um, and underneath it, some really solid malt. Um, cereals, fruit, that was great there. 32, I... <laughs> Again, like my protest vote on the low-proof bourbon, I really didn't want to like the 20-year-old, 20-plus, but the, I, the finish was just phenomenal. This, this whiskey was doing okay up through mid-palate, and then it just kind of took off for me. It has a... Uh, um, almost like a, an antique furniture character to it, uh, something well-polished and um, delicate, but I know that even if I sit my big fat ass on it, it's going to hold me. I, I just, I, I love this, this whiskey. I, I'm, I'm going to come down on 32. All right. Thank you. Clay, you up? Uh, I'm also going to go with 32. Uh, to me, it's a little weird because it's like one of these things is not like the other, you know? 32 is definitely um, the oddball, but I think it's fantastic. 30 and 31 for me were right neck and neck. I, I like a sweeter peat, so for me, 31 was um, a little more in my ballpark, but I absolutely get what Lou's saying uh, with 30. There's so much cool stuff going on there. Uh, for me, ultimately, the, the kind of uh, just beautiful, delicate, sophisticated fruitiness of 32 wins out, so that's where I go. All that said, I mean, if somebody handed me a bottle of 27, I would drink that some bitch tomorrow. I'm just saying, the blended. Noted. D, how you doing? So I had to nail it down between 30 and 32. I love the fruitiness on 32, combined with all the other things it's balancing with, like that semi kind of smoky, um, not as peaty as the rest, but 30 is probably my favorite. The first thing that I tasted when I um, sipped it was actually jalapeno spicy initially which kind of threw me off at first but then it went into all the stuff i like like the dark chocolate roasted coffee i get the pea i get some little dried soil a little petrichor so um 30 is definitely the winner for me 30 is the winner all right jack i had to go on a mission here because i i pretty much split them in between heated and non-peated to kind of see what it was on the non-peated side Honestly, for me, 29 was the one that actually had the perfect balance of those marzipan, beautiful note. The malt was coming in perfectly. On the peated size, 31 was the one that was coming up. So I was dead even, split between 29 and 31. But if I had to choose my favorite, it would be 31. All right. Thank you so much. Tiffany. Super fun flight, I think. Yeah, 30 was exciting. It was creamy, it was a mouthful, it was carbonara to me, like sun-dried tomatoes. It had so many layers of flavor, very pairing kind of scotch. But um, 32 kicked its ass. There's lots of beautiful notes. There's that saline touch, peaches, apricots, a slight bit of thyme that I wrote down. Um, I'd crush this bottle in a heartbeat. And, and I feel that just because it's, it's approachable, not to say these others are not, but this to me defines what scotch is. Two scotches that I really dug, 31 and 32, um, which I think are different regions, but 32 was maybe the best thing I've tasted all day. So that's where I'm going. 32, thank you, Mark. So my thoughts are, this was a nice flight. Um, I was both a little surprised and maybe a little disappointed as well that we did not see any higher proof representation from the world of scotch, whether it's blended or single malt. I had to go back and, and taste through a second time. And my, my first impression was the correct impression, which ended up being 31. There were some really, really nice representations. 30, 32 were beautiful. From the perspective of uh, finish, I would say that 31 had A, the most complex and B, the most finesse. Uh, finishes especially with with the peat it was very very beautifully balanced and i picked 31 as my as my winner hey by the way lou i louis i i'm in sync with you tonight your comments were spot on and it's friday night in vegas 
I pick 30. I like to listen with Simple Mind song Alive and Kicking. I like the beauty, like a young teenager on testosterone mode. I like the 30th. Uh, the 30th has that brightness, smoke, peat, and it's just a beautiful, lively, you know, uh, peated uh, single malt. But of course, uh, 32 and 31 are second to known, and it was a tough call, but I today I just think 30 is something unique, is not granted. So I stick with 30. All right, thank you. And now it comes down to Louisville. Susan, what are your thoughts? 32 was very big, and of course that was appealing. But 31, I think 31 has more finesse. And I'm very much enjoying, I think it's, it's tipped for me to, to 31. All right, thank you. 29 to me was the playful one of the bunch. Um, the bartender in me wanted to figure out a cocktail to pair with that, thought it was amazing. In between the two, I'd say 32. I don't know if it's just, you know, the bourbon palette, but there was a lot more complexity in that than just a little bit of peatiness. Um, so 32 is gonna be the one for me. Thank you. This is, this is a great flight. I feel like 31 has become kind of like, if I close my eyes and think of like a really good uh, Scotch whiskey, I think of 31. Uh, 31 kind of goes down a road that I really personally like. But when it comes down to it, you gotta, you gotta do your best to pull out your personal preferences. I, I feel like 32 is special and that's what has my vote. All right, thank you. Best scotch of the year goes to 32. Mm -hmm.